Creating another Split Rock Mining Company boxcar to send to a friend, and here's our starting point. PCF 50-foot smooth side, 14-foot plug door right from Athern. Beautiful, ready-to-run car. We got it out of the box here. We'll look at the bottom, some nice detailing. We're going to have to remove coupler box and the trucks to get ready to paint that. Here's the cushion underframe detailing. Very nice couple screws to go. Get rid of that box, and uh, here it is with those things removed, and the trucks and screws. Got them. I'll put those in a safe place, and we will go on to removing the factory lettering, so we can get on to primary in this nice box car up. Going outside, have my compressor. I've got my air eraser from Harbor Freight. We have our boxcar here. We got our aluminum oxide grit blast material. And let's take the lettering off. And here we've finished the grit blasting. We washed it in some warm soapy water, got rid of all the oxide particles. We got the ends, we got the sides. There'll be no raised lettering. There's a little broken part, we'll fix that. And we're gonna get ready to apply some primer. Got a nice can of Tamaya gray primer it's very fine this will make a great base to put that split rock mining company yellow right over this car and here is our primered box car we let it dry 24 hours tamaya come makes a nice product there we got all four sides we got the we even fixed the little broken piece on the door there the ends nice and smooth the other side and even got some up on top, but we got the base and it's all covered and it's ready for the yellow. And here's the yellow. It's actually CSX yellow by Floquil. We don't make it anymore, so I've been hoarding bottles when I can find them. And we'll take this gray box car and apply a whole lot of light coats of yellow. Box car is out of the spray booth and it's a beautiful split rock mining color yellow, all four sides. Even got overspray on the roof. And on the roof we'll paint silver to make it look like the yellow was the overspray. But we're ready for gloss coating and some decals. And here is the gloss coat I like to use, VMS, Vantage Modeling Solutions. They're out of Poland. I order from them. And you just shake this up, put it in your airbrush, and spray it. Comes in gloss, satin, and matte. We'll be using all three of those for different portions. But for now, we need gloss. So let's put on a nice coat, and we'll be ready for the applying the custom decals. And here are the custom decals I've made myself and some other ones that I've bought for the detail for the plug doors. I got the lettering. We got logos of different sizes. I've got the weigh data and all the important things that'll go on this nice box car so we can send it on its way properly lettered. And here's the car ready to be decaled. I have the decals all cut out and ready to go. So I can apply them all at one time. I can work on one entire side. I'll trim these portions of that decal sheet as needed. I've got my example, number 51, I gave to Greg Dahl a double door plug door. This is a single door plug door, and we're ready to apply this one side of decals. Here's a clever trick when you're applying end decals, find an old sports cup or something, put a paper towel and wrap your model in there. Stand straight on its end, then you don't have to hold it. You can apply all the end decals and data that you want very easily. Here is the link to the live show where I applied all the decals for this. You can look at that here. 
Now our car has the decals applied. It looks really good. We're going to bust out the Microsol and we're going to get rid of any bubbles or silvering that we see and smooth all those decals right out. Now we're ready to put another coat over the decals. Got my airbrush, we got the booth ready and we got the VMS varnish. And this time we're going to use satin because that'll make it really nice to put weathering on and the pin washes will just flow. Here's a close up. After we've used the VMS varnish, you can see the decals have pretty much disappeared. You can put on a couple coats, it gives a beautiful finish. And now we're ready to start weathering this car. I did the first step of weathering during a live show. Here is the link to that. So the next step in weathering, we're going to put some dirt and grime on the bottom. And this is a neat little mixture that I found by watching the military channels, specifically Panzermeister 36. What a great guy. See all the places we're going to put dirt and grime just in dust that collects on the bottom of freight cars. And we'll just set this one on its roof. And the formula for this is Tamiya XF69 NATO Black and Tamiya XF72 Brown. And you use 20% of each color paint mixed with 60% of the lacquer thinner. Yellow cap, Tamiya. Neat little secret. That'll give it a nice flat finish because the Tamiya, if you look, see they got a little flammable. So you can use lacquer thinners with these. Neat trick I found out. So mix up that, we're going to spray it on, and here we go. There we are, looking good, looking grimy, looking dusty, looking like it's used every day. And all the road grime kicked up. We got a nice dirt on the bottom of that car. And while we got the old airbrush out, let's work on that roof. So we're gonna paint this silver, but we're not gonna paint it solid silver because we want the yellow to look like it was oversprayed. So we got some nice Tamiya XF11. Nice chrome silver there. That'll work great. Little flammable sign so we can use our lacquer thinner and we can come up with a nice finish. So let's mix up a little batch of that and start spraying that rough. The next step of weathering, we're going to put some scratches and scrapes where the plug door goes across this side of the body. We got our favorite color there, the German black brown, nice military color. We have the paint in our palette. We've thinned it using some distilled water. We've got some small pointy brushes and we have our box car on some paper towels. Here we've added scratches to each side, note which side the plug door goes to. And now we're gonna add another layer of weathering. Weathering's always done in layers. We got the old Vallejo wash. I love this, oxide red, very thin rust streaks. We got it in our palette and we're ready to go at it. Here's an example of the wash. You can see the one side has been used. The other side is clean. This is the Vallejo brown. This makes a great weathering tool. I would suggest this color. Apply a small puddle and then push it around and thin it out it'll make a great looking roof. So we have the roof with the brown on it finished. So now let's go a little bit of the oxide rust. 
and this is to give it a little color variations and we'll pick specific areas just put a couple drops on there and then we'll dry brush our brush and we'll go back and blend that right in all of weathering is blending and layers and blending and layers and you'll have a nice finished product you don't overdo it just make it nice and simple weathering the ends of box cars you can see the ribs and I'm got my brown wash here and the trick is to get it on top of the ribs that's where the dirt collects that's where the water runs down from the roof and everything lands on top of those ribs doesn't go on the bottom doesn't go in streaks we'll talk about wheel streaks later but you want to get any dirt or grime that you apply on top of those ribs and another little detail are these tag boards this is actual wood and so we're gonna paint these to stand out I got my little washed out gray color light gray color here and we will apply that and here I've applied it on the tag boards if I can get it in the light and you'll also notice you'll see it on the rear of the car too don't forget that now the next part on the bottom we're gonna add some lighter colored dust and here's what we're gonna do we got oils titanium white and here's the secret I learned was transparent orange iron oxide transparent yes and I you mix these two together in like a 50 50 mix and it looks like orange juice but you are gonna get a stiff brush like this and we're gonna dry brush it on by stippling it on the bottom and then we'll get a soft brush like this and we're gonna blend it out and so here's the mix got a couple oils and I've got this and you're seeing it's orange but wait till you see what it looks like in the end Here I got my brush loaded with that paint I've wiped off the excess and I'm just gonna stipple on little lines and dots on the end where the dust will kick up from the trucks see all that in there then I'll take this other brush and I'm just gonna buff it out I'm going from top to bottom and you want to just make it blend it in there and here you see where it's a little lighter gray and I'll move the car so you can see where the paint is because that's still oil paints but that'll get covered up with the finish so here we're just going to buff it out and we're always going to go top to bottom and you just want to blend 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 make sure you got a clean brush and get all that dust down there because that'll lighten up that darker paint that we sprayed on there earlier with the, the brown and the black so here's a contrast we haven't done it on that so this side has the night nice light coloring time to go after the trucks we're gonna remove the wheels I've got a bamboo skewer and some tape and I'll use those two things to hold the trucks like this while I paint and weather them and they won't spin around or get out of hand simple simple tools for that and I can just stick them in a nice chunk of scrap florist foam that I have laying around here we go here's our wheels we want to get rid of the shine just make them a dark or gray color got a little micro brush disposable here's my basalt gray nice general gray color and there's a wheel that I've painted I like using the brush instead of spray painting it because that keeps the points clear of the paint All right, now we get to work on the trucks themselves. Bust out my can of TS-80 Tamiya Flat Clear, and I use the flat because that'll give it a rough surface that'll attract the weathering powders. And dark brown and dark rust work from dark to light and give these trucks a nice dusting of this. It'll stick to the flat coat. Here you can see them. Just a little light weathering on there. You don't have to make them rust buckets. Just make them look 
used and you'll be fine. And now reassembling the car, it's time to improve the couplers. And I've got my standard Katie number five magnetic couplers, beautiful workhorse. And what I do is I get a flat file and I file the top and the bottom of the shank. And that just removes any little debris or anything on top, makes them move left or right very clean. And I even get after the knuckle a bit. You can see a little shiny bit there. So when they're coupling up, there's no flash or anything to make them connect when they shouldn't. And here's the finished product, ready to be boxed up and sent out. Couldn't resist putting some of the locals out there admiring the work. It looks pretty good. It's on its way to Arkansas, and it'll serve the Cotton Belt Railway for the next number of years.